Hey there guys, it is me, the Dom Fanatic, and welcome to week two of the GBA D-League season three. We are back on Wi-Fi this week, as you can see. Um, feels so good, I much prefer playing on Wi-Fi than do Showdown. It was just a real shame that last week we had to resort to Showdown, but we are back to Wi-Fi like I promised I would be. Um, and today we are up against Magic Activator and his team, the Memphis Drizzlies. Now, both me and uh, Magic were both coming in off the back of Week 1 defeats. Um, week 1 defeats is something I'm certainly used to, um, because it tends to happen to me a lot. Um, don't really know much about Magic as a player uh, at all going into this game. All that I know is he has a ridiculously scary draft. Uh, and it was very, very, very hard to build for him. There were definitely some things which I immediately spotted to bring. But, you know, filling out a team of six to try and counteract his, his draft was near impossible. There was always going to be weaknesses. We'll go over the team in a second. But uh, Magic did lose 5-0 in the uh, opening week um, to Dineki and the Rosen Raid Rosen Raidenbergs? Rosen Raidenbergs? Yeah, that team. Um, 5 0 So it was a heavy defeat. So he's really going to be looking to get the win this week. You can already tell. Um, obviously my defeat last week was a very close 2-0 uh, to Aberforth and in other leagues I've been playing kind of in between the D-League um, namely the MPCC we, I've been uh, I've started the League 2-0 so I'm on like some good a good vein of form at the moment so I'm looking to try and continue that sort of winning streak I guess that I have um, and uh, Magic definitely isn't going to be any kind of pushover um, knowing that the D-League is going to be a pushover so that's kind of enough of like a, an introduction. We'll just go over the draft Magic has, um, and I don't think there's really one mon which you can ring like really say wouldn't be a solid bring against my team. He's got Landorus Ferian, which is uh, a Z move user, uh, Mega Venusaur, Milotic, Arcanine, Jolteon. So immediately there, Water Fire Grass Core is absolutely disgusting. Um, Kartana, Kamala, Gardevoir, Mien Shao, Miss Magius, and Armaldo. Looking at the team he's bought, obviously he's got the Jolteon, which I knew would be a massive pain to my team. Uh, sort of no matter what I brought, there was only, uh, what was there, there's only Electivire that I could have really bought to, to take it on, as well as maybe Clefable. But neither of them things were really things I wanted to bring this week, because there's so many ways that he could deal with them. It's not even funny. Um, so I knew that would run right. Kartana is Kartana, it, it does what it does with a base 181 physical attack, What what do you do against that thing? I've got plans for it, um, and we've got ways to play around it, so we'll go over that shortly. Mega Venusaur is just fat no matter what set he brings. Even offensive ones are fat, but again, Mega Venusaur was probably to be expected because, you know, it takes on the Lopany pretty well. Um, but I do definitely have a lot of answers, as you can see, on my team that can deal with the Mega Venusaur. Um, Lando T was pretty much always going to come. Um, it's probably his best stealth rocker, and in this team he's bought, it's his only stealth rocker. Another thing which you have to notice, uh, really, is he hasn't got any form of hazard removal. He has an Arcanine. Um, no hazard removal means 325%. Uh, the Scun Tank set I'll go over in a minute, briefly, um, because obviously there'll be a team builder before this. Um, but, uh, you know, with Rocks up and sort of taking Arcanine down, which could potentially be a check to Lopany, um, especially when Ice Punch is my best way of taking down Lando, you know, that, that kind of combo there works quite well. Um, so, uh, you know, uh, it, it would be quite nice, you know, just to hit one of them hard. I, I've lost my trailer fort completely there, but um, Lando T was pretty much always going to come. I could see that coming. Same as Arcanine. He really struggled um, with, with kind of like Lop, if, if not, I, I guess not. I mean, he's got Venusaur, Lando and Arcanine, which all take on incredibly well. Um, finally, he bought the Gardevoir, which I did expect because otherwise Latias just does completely run for his team. Completely runs for his team anyway. Um, obviously, if I can weaken the Guard of War first, that'd be excellent. Um, but we'll go over the team briefly because uh, hopefully you guys have seen the team builder. Um, it should have been uploaded yesterday, but if not, I'd make sure that you go and check that out before you watch the battle because it'll explain a lot of things behind plays which I might forget to explain later on. Um, we have got a speedy offensive Megalopony just to outspeed the Jolteon. It's the best thing I have to outspeed Jolteon. Um, I used Flame or Quick Feet Jolteon in League Play the other day, so very wary that is something that could be coming. Um, I am Power Up Punch, Return, Drain Punch, and Ice Punch. So pretty standard. Next up, we've got a really spicy Scun Tank set. Um, <coughs> excuse me. Uh, the common sort of theme is his walls are all sort of like around the 80. Well, literally, Venusaur is 80. Gardevoir, I think it's base 80 speed. Milotic, 81. 
Arcanine sort of being his speedy wall that he has there. Um, but I, you know, EV this thing to outspeed all of those. Uh, Taunt stops all of their recovery, and we have got Toxic, which obviously doesn't hit the, the, the Venusaur, but I can just sit in there, tank hits as long as he doesn't have Earthquake. Literally knock off, does nothing. Giga Drain does nothing. Sludge Bomb does nothing. Um, while recovering health with Black Sludge, you know, so um, it's a really nice spicy set which which shut down a lot of his walls. Um, so that's the reason behind that. Volcarona, just pure life orb, no setup. This thing hits like a truck, even Fire Blast, I believe, two it KOs Mega Venusaur after Stealth Rocks. Um, I think that's even a max for death set. It might have been max physical death, it's one of the two. Psychic does do more, so if I do hit a Fire Blast, I can then go for the Psychic and take it out. So Volcarona literally looking at his team, just two shots it, um, just to emphasize how ridiculously powerful Volcarona is, um, I believe physically defensive Arcanine takes 45% from Life or 5 last. So after rocks it's still not a switch in. Um, next up we've got Choice Bandit's Doraptor, uh, just, uh, his whole draft has no flying resists other than Jolteon. And I'm Jolly Band, so if he wants to think it's a switch in, it's not because uh, Brave Bird is a, is a roll to kill, I think it's literally like a 50-50. So, uh, that that's cool. Otherwise, I bring Staraptor in anything that isn't Scarfed, and it gets a kill as long as it's not intimidated. Even then, I believe Lando max defense with like one intimidate off on it still gets two shot by Brave Bird. It is that disgusting. Um, so that thing is a massive win con here, just breaking down walls. Um, the idea was just really to just, like to have Staraptor just click Brave Bird as much as possible, uh, and then clean up with Latias, Scun Tank kind of like. Stopping the recovery basically so Latias can do what it needs to do. Latias is a uh, stored power uh, He has no dark types, so I can literally just click stored power. The only thing that takes stored power is Gardevoir um, Obviously In hindsight, I don't know if it was the correct set to bring it's a very good set because he has no dark type Like I said if I can get two calm minds up that is just a Latias, you know waiting to steamroll his team um, So that also had a roost uh, calm mind and substitute because again if I can get a set of Calm Mind up, I can set up a substitute behind uh, against the Arcanine. I can set one up against the Venusaur if he doesn't have Knock Off. I can set one up against the Jolteon if he doesn't have Shadow Ball. Um, and you know, if I can get enough Calm Minds up, I can pretty much just set up on Jolteon and uh, Gardevoir anyway. Despite Gardevoir being a fairy, of course. So um, it was a, it was a decent bring. I would have to be honest. It's a free switch in sort of every time Venusaur hits the field, but so is the Raptor. And then, um, final pick is uh, the Reggie Steel. Um, it's kind of really my only wall this week. I guess you could consider this team pretty offensive because we've got Jolly Lop, Modest, Skun Tank, Timid, Volcarona, Jolly, Staraptor, and Timid Latias. And then we've just got Fat Reggie Steel, which just sits there and sits there and does Fat Reggie Steel things. Now I've got no wish support for it. Um, we are Stealth Rock, Magnet Rise, um, Iron Head, and. Hidden Power Fire uh, with Choppleberry because it literally destroys Kartana. It's the only thing on my draft that can take on Kartana um, decently well. So that's the reasoning behind that. Uh, and, and as you can see, it, I mean, it, it kind of switches into Venusaur. If he doesn't have Earthquake, it can kind of switch in to Jolteon. And I'm expecting a supportive Gardevoir, so I'm not expecting Focus Blast or anything like that, so it can switch into Gardevoir too. Um, that's enough of a summary of the team. Obviously, if you guys want to see more in depth, sort of thing about EVs and uh, IVs and sort of move analysis I guess you could say um, then you should go and watch that video but without further ado let's just jump straight into the battle I literally had this battle about half an hour ago so it's fresh in my mind um, sorry if I do make mistakes obviously with it in advance but it's an incredibly good game probably one of my favorite Wi-Fi battles I've had in a long time Try not to spoil it as much as I can, we'll get straight into this. So, I am going to lead with my Mega Lopunny. I am going to click Power Up Punch straight away, turn one. Uh, it'll do massive amounts to the Jolteon, and uh, obviously this Jolteon isn't going to outspeed me unless it is Scarfed. He has many, many, many switch-ins to uh, this thing. Um, so, uh, one of them was going to come in. I felt like Power Up Punch was a safe play, especially as two of them are Intimidate users. If he goes into the Venusaur, I can just click Return twice and probably take it out. Especially as he isn't Mega Evolved yet, so that would have been interesting. Um, I do click the Power Up Punch. Uh, it doesn't do much, but it does reveal it's an offensive Landorus. I see no item. I'm thinking, okay, I probably won't die to an Earthquake. If I stay in and click Ice Punch, I kill this thing. Um, but he actually hard switches, so he could be Yachi Berry. That's why I've got my mind, but he could also be uh, a Z-Move, which is also 
very likely. Um, I do click Ice Punch because, you know, any opportunity to take out a Lando that early would be lovely. If I had clicked um, Return there or, or Drain Punch, um, that would have been quite nice just to get some nice damage off against this Arcanine. As you can see, it's, I think it's max defense, this Arcanine, from what I worked out from the Calc. Um, I'm expecting a Will-O-Wisp. Um, Latias is like the, the most free thing I have to take this uh, Will-O-Wisp. Otherwise, it would be Skuntank, but I kind of want to keep Skuntank for a bit later on in the game. When his walls are a bit more worn down, where I can taunt them and, and stop them from recovering. Um, because he's got Guard of War, I'm, I'm going to click Substitute here. There's no point in me clicking Store Power. That will reveal my set. Substitute and Roost um, won't reveal anything. If he didn't bring in the Guard of War, then sweet. I probably get a free sub up against the uh, Arcanine. I'm going to click Roost here. There's no point in me clicking Calm Mind, um, because... A plus one store power is going to be doing like 20% of this Gardevoir. Um, if I click Roost, I'm going to be up to uh, a decent amount of HP. Pretty much full, minus one round of burn damage. So I figured that would be my best play. He's going to obviously break my substitute with a Moonblast. Um, but uh, that's fine. The sub is there to take the hit. And we're coming out of this exchange with a, a, uh, a relatively healthy Latias. Still something that can easily set up on the Venusaur if needed. So, um, obviously I'm going to have to switch out here because I can't stay in against this thing. He doesn't know if I have Shadow Ball or not. If I had Shadow Ball, I probably would have clicked Calm Mind. Because I would have taken a Moonblast a bit better and I click, could click Shadow Ball twice. I have Registeel though and it's a safe switch. I have to be careful with what I do with this thing. Because it is my only answer to Kartana. If it's Scarf Kartana, it outspeeds my whole team. Um, so I need to be careful of what I do with Registeel. In comes the, um, the Lando, obviously uh, it's not going to do anything to me. Uh, I clicked Stealth Rock here. I was in two minds. I wasn't sure if Arcanine was a switch in or Landorus was a switch in. Um, obviously I could be carrying Earthquake, potentially. Um, but he does switch this thing in. I was so close to clicking Magnet Rise. This thing cannot touch me if I have Magnet Rise. Then I slightly shit myself because... Oh, that's going to demonetize my video now. Oh well. Um, he clicks Rock Polish. Now, it turns out Magic bought the wrong Landorus. Um, I think this is his Landorus from week one. And I am pooping bricks at this point because I have nothing, absolutely nothing, that can take a hit from this Lando, other than Registeel, potentially. But I can't do anything back to this Landorus. Um, he's going to click Z-Fly, and I am so thankful that he clicked it now. If he took me out with any other move, um, I, I was thinking, you know, if he clicks U-10, I'll probably live. And it means he's, you know, going to get rid of the speed boost. That's fine. Um, I do lose Latias. I had to sack it off at this point. The only way I can try and scare this thing out is by bringing in Lopunny and hoping I can live an Earthquake. That's literally all I have. Thankfully for me, he switches out. And this is uh, where I found out after the battle he did bring the wrong set. Instead of Rock Polish, he was actually meant to have Stealth Rocks. The fact he didn't have Stealth Rocks and didn't have the chance to put them up is so important. Um, we'll come to that sort of when it, you know, occurs, but... I click Ice Punch, I have to, otherwise I do lose. For real, I lose to Landorus. There's nothing I can do. Um, he brings in the Arcanine. I have to keep Low Pony around. If I can bring this thing in after something dies, I'm like guaranteed a massive hit on something. So I'm going to bring in uh, Skun Tank because it's my only other specially sort of offensive mom. The Will O' Wisp isn't going to be bothering me too much because I am Black Sludge. Um, shout out to Shardy, by the way, for the, uh, for the nickname. There was nothing else I could call this thing. Um, but like I said, uh, this is kind of where my Skun Tank set comes into play. I, like I said, I outsped this thing. Uh, he can't Morning Sun, which is crucial. It means if he wants to stay in and take a hit, he dies to two Dark Pulses. He's not got Leftovers, which means he definitely dies to the Dark Pulses. And because he's Rocky Helmet, obviously I won't be taking any recoil. If he wants to do damage to me, he has to click Extreme Speed. Um, if he'd have clicked Flare Blitz there, um, obviously he'd have taken a massive amount of recoil. But as you can see, Dark Pulse does a nice amount of damage to this thing. One more is going to take it out, uh, and I mean, Stealth Rocks is going to bring it to the point where it's pretty much just death fodder going forwards. So, Arcanine is pretty much down at this point. That's one of three things that stop Megalopony, <laughs> and um, potentially the uh, the Volcarona too. So, uh, in comes the uh, Venusaur. I clicked Dark Pulse because he's not Mega yet. This Dark Pulse actually does alright damage, to be honest. Um, obviously, I don't know what this Venusaur set is yet. I don't know if he, ever, uh, if he has an Earthquake. That's the only move I have to fear from this thing, or any some like some random hidden path fire. I switch out because I know he's seen me click taunt. I can just click taunt, stop him from clicking 
the uh, synthesis or leech seed button. Um, but just in case he does want to do that, I figured, you know, Seraptor gets a free switch in here, something on his team dies to a brave bird at this point. Um, he does click synthesis, which I find odd, because if I had just clicked taunt there, his um, Venusaur would have been in a pretty bad position. Um, again, I, I could have just got like a free Dark Pulse off and, and just chipped something down on his team. I'm pretty confident at this point he needs the Venusaur, um, so he's going to switch it out. And he does bring in the Arcanine. That's understandable, because like I said, after Stealth Rocks, he's pretty much Death Fodder anyway. I am Choice Band. Um, I'm pretty sure the Choice Band actually makes this a kill. Um, if he had obviously lived, um, the Extreme Speed could have been like a last ditch sort of effort he, he got off to hit something. I would have had to have gone into Skun Tank anyway, really, to kill this thing. Because uh, I outspeed it, and Extreme Speed, you know, is the only thing he can hit me with. And it's the most expendable mod in my draft at this point. Here I go into Volcarona, and he brings in the Jolteon. Um, I expected the Jolteon to come in anyway, because it's the fastest thing he has, and I have no switch-ins. Um, Stealth Rocks is important. Here he clicks Hidden Power, and I'm like, oh, has he predicted the switch into Registeel? Nope, he's Hidden Power Rock. Thankfully, he's not a boosting item. Thankfully, Volcarona is pretty fat on the specially defensive side, and we do take that. So I click Roost, because I wanted to scout out what he'd do. I was expecting a Volt Switch. Um... This turn, I expect him to predict me to go into my um, Registeel, uh, but I don't. I stay in and click Roost again, because obviously the Flame Orb means he now outspeeds my whole team, including the Lopany. Um, I I'm trying to play around it so he gets as much burn damage as possible. Um, obviously, the more damage I can do on it, the better. If I can get it into about half, um, Quick Attack from Staraptor does kill it, as long as he's not like HP invested Jolteon for whatever reason, um, which he could very well be, actually. Um, here he goes to the Hidden Power Rock, that's fine. Um, if he wants to take out my Skun Tank, uh, Aftermath can... Actually, you know what, I don't think Aftermath does go off. That's a, that's a good point, I didn't even realise it in the battle, but I'm thinking, okay, if I go down, Aftermath will go off, do the damage I need, and this thing dies to Staraptor. He clicks Thunderbolt, and sadly for me, it does go down. So, I do have to go into my Lopany here, it's the only thing I have, other than Registeel, that can take a hit, but I can't touch this Jolteon in return. I have to go into Lopany, just bluff the fact I have Fake Out and Quick Attack. Um, obviously, he's still got a switch into Lando and Venusaur. Uh, he does click Volt Switch because he is faster, so he did risk the Fake Out. Um, if he did click Thunderbolt there, I don't think I'd have died. Um, I think, you know, Lopany is naturally bulky enough to the point where it can just take a hit. Um, but I do click Drain Punch, and I do believe I actually get a critical hit at this point. Um, which does decent damage, actually, to be fair. Um, I don't think I've done a calc, so I can't tell you what set this Venusaur is. Um, to me, that Drain Punch looked like it still did too much for it to be max defense, but again, I don't know. I haven't done the calc. Um, I'm going to bring in Volcarona. I don't think he can kill me with anything, unless he has hidden power rock on this as well. Um, he does go for the Sludge Bomb. Because of the natural sort of bulk, uh, I, I take that decently well. I could just Roost Stall here, um, but I don't want him getting a free switch into like his uh, Jolteon. So I clicked Psychic. Psychic would have taken that Venusaur down to literally nothing. Um, and thankfully, because I am Life Orb, the Psychic is actually enough to the point where it dies to a burn. In the game, I was absolutely terrified because I thought this burn wasn't going to take it out at that last second where that last little bit of red was there. I thought it was going to stick there, but thankfully it died. And this means he's forced to bring in the Kartana because uh, Volcarona outspeeds the rest of his team now. Um... He has to click Sacred Sword, or he clicks Sacred Sword. I am Flame Body, so there is the chance I get the Flame Body hacks. If I get Flame Body, I think it's pretty much just GG there. Um, because Registeel kind of tanks this thing, even without the Choppleberry. But he does get to plus one. So at this point, I have to go into Registeel. Um, reveal on Choppleberry. I believe I can take one plus one Sacred Sword. I believe he's Choice Scarfed as well. Uh, obviously, the well, he might not have been Scarfed the way he bought it in. Um, but I think he ended up bringing the Choice Scarfed variant. Um, in comes the Lando. I was very close to clicking Magnet Rise again because I thought this would be a switch in because obviously Arcanine is dead. However, I do click Hidden Power because I can't really mess around with uh, that Kartana setting up in my face. Here is a huge play. He clicks Fly. Um, I have no switch ins, so I just have to, to, to do something. I click Magnet Rise. Because he clicked Fly, uh, th this Fly will do nothing to Registeel because it is obviously uh, massively bulky and resists the hit. It's a Lando, so it still does decent damage, still does 30 HP. But I can now get a vital Iron Head off. Um, it does decent damage, as you can see, kind of revealing this is an offensive Lando. I think the set he was originally planning on bringing was a bit more defensive. So, 
He does bring in the Venusaur at this point. Here I make the play. I haven't seen a rock move on him, so I think Staraptor is probably a safe play. Um, what do you know? Uh, he pulls a double into Venusaur. Now, for real, this is the time where I literally just click Brave Bird. Something on his team dies. Um, he decides to leave him Venusaur, which is fair play. Um, and this is where the Stealth Rocks and the Dark Pulse, uh, sorry, the uh, Drain Punch crit matter. Because Venusaur was at such low hate, that, oh, sorry, at that amount of HP, I survive on 102. If he is Jolly Kartana, the max roll Sacred Sword can do is 103. He literally needs the highest of rolls to kill me. Smart Strike could have killed me, but obviously he was expecting me to switch into the Registeel. However, I literally had to stay in and click Brave Bird. Kartana's gone. Lopany outspeeds everything and it can do huge, huge damage. However, because I do Brave Bird, obviously I'm going to go down at this point. It's now a 2 on 2, and the winner of this game is going to be decided by multiple 50 50s. He goes into the Gardevoir, um, which I should have probably seen coming. I go into the Lopany and I'm like, nope, I am not staying in here. If I had the Iron Tail, I could have obviously stayed in potentially and clicked that, but I still have uh, the Registeel. The Kartana's gone, so Registeel is, you know, more, more expendable. He clicks Fun the Wave, so I'm so glad I didn't stay in there because I would have just lost otherwise. Um, the Paralysis, obviously, if I get fully paralyzed, I think at any point I just lose. But I haven't seen what this um, Guard of White is. We've seen Moonblast, seen Fun the Wave. I'm expecting it to be a Wish Passer. He has to click Wish here because he's obviously going to try and get into Lando and heal up. But if I land my Iron Head here, I believe I win. Um, just straight up. Because that Ironhead does so much damage, obviously this Gardevoir isn't going to be taking a return from Megalopony, uh, literally in, in any sense, and it will just die. He decides to stay in, he doesn't heal up the Lando, because uh, he obviously Moonblasts uh, and stays in, he's going to get healed up. Thankfully I don't get paralyzed again, and the Ironhead does hit the um, does hit the Gardevoir. Now, there's still a chance for him to win. If he clicks Rock Polish, um, and I don't click Magnet Rise, he wins. Um, but because I have Magnet Rise, if I if he clicks Earthquake, he kills me, I go into Lopany, I win. If I click Magnet Rise and he Rock Polishes, he can't kill me and I kill him with two Iron Heads, but obviously we're playing with um, Paralysis at this point. He also doesn't know that I don't have any priority on Lopany at this point. He clicks Earthquake, thankfully. I did click uh, Magnet Rise. It doesn't matter, because uh, the Earthquake is always going to take me out. I do not mind, because we are going to bring in the Mega Lopany. We know he's not Yachi Berry, we know he's not defensive. He's used that supersonic sky strike up. He's not at plus two speed, and we are going to click the ice punch and get the very narrow 1 0 victory in possibly, like I said right at the start of the video, one of the best battles I've probably had in League um, in general, let alone on Wi Fi. So, Magic, that was an absolutely amazing game. I loved every second of it, apart from when you made me poop myself when Lando got to plus two speed. But thankfully, you brought the wrong set and didn't bring Stealth Rocks because. If he'd have bought Stealth Rocks, Staraptor would not have been able to get that Brave Bird off on the Kartana. Um, the Volcarona wouldn't have been able to switch in as freely as it did. Um, and obviously the Lop Honey and the, and the Registeer would have been at a bit lower health, which, you know, at the end kind of just took on your, the rest of your team quite well together. So, really good game magic. Like I've said, if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you obviously uh, leave a like. Leave a comment what you thought on the battle, uh, sort of how incredibly close it was. I'm willing to put out there that this battle is going to be one of the battles of the season, uh, if not definitely this week. So, um, uh, again, I can't get over how close it was. But the main, <coughs> excuse me, the main, so I've gone the whole video about coughing. The main, obviously, sort of uh, thing for us here is we have got our first win in the D League this season. Obviously, we're not going to go on a, a winless record, which is uh, enough for me to be happy. But obviously, we're here to try and win titles against some good players. So. We've beaten one player, we've lost to one good player so far. So, if you guys, like I said, did enjoy the video, make sure you leave a like, comment on what you thought about the battle. Make sure you check out the links to uh, Magic's YouTube and uh, Twitter in the description below. And uh, I think that should be it. Week 3, I don't even know who I'm up against. So, you'll find out uh, next week uh, in, in the team builder if you decide to watch that, or Week 3's battle when it goes up next Sunday. Alright guys, so thank you for watching again. Uh, I do love a good ramble. It wouldn't be a Jack video if I didn't ramble. And I'll see you guys later. Bye.